Welcome back to America Right Now. The president is continuing to blame inflation and the spiraling economy on Vladimir Putin. The White House is now calling it, quote, the Putin price hike, despite all evidence to the contrary. This comes after new numbers show consumer prices rising 8.5 percent, hitting their highest since 1981. And joining us now to talk about the new numbers and what we do about all of this is the chairman and editor-in-chief of Forbes Media and the co-author of the brand new book, Inflation, What It Is, Why It's Bad, and How to Fix It. Steve Forbes is here. Uh, Steve, thank you so much for being here. I've got the book. The book is fa the book is fantastic. Uh, let's take thank a, you. Let's take a look at the difference between now and just a year ago, March 2021. You see that inflation, 2.6 percent. Then we're now at 8.5 percent. Focus on the basics first, sir. How did we get here? Well, we got here for two basic reasons. One is Biden has put real barriers in the way of recovering from the lockdowns, which disrupted supply chains here and around the world, waging war on oil and gas, reducing production at a time when we needed to increase it. And uh, then on the Federal Reserve, printing up a lot of money without uh, parallel production. So you print too much money, you block the economy. Guess what happens? Cost of living goes up. And to blame it on Putin, Putin didn't stop the XL pipeline. Putin wasn't buying $120 billion of bonds each month well, uh, when the, uh, with this excess of spending, mm -hmm. Federal Reserve printing money out of thin air. Putin didn't do that. Biden and the Federal Reserve did. Uh, Steve, what about the student loan and the eviction moratoriums? Didn't the government also sink millions of Americans into actually even more debt intentionally there? And, and, and what impact does that have on, on inflation or the overall economic outlook for the country? Well, it's another burden on the economy, uh, writing off uh, those loans, uh, making a mockery of people who paid off those loans when they uh, went to college, uh, working people. Many people don't go to college. Why should they be subsidizing those that do? And if universities want government help, they should, by golly, take a, a, be a liable for some of those loans. Mm. So they have a vested interest in you graduating and learning something that would be useful in the workplace. Hello. Yeah, actually getting So it's a another job. burden. And, and these burdens in and of themselves, each one you could say, well, it doesn't do that much harm, but you add them all up and you get real harm. Now, now Steve, the Fed is signaling uh, raising interest rates pretend, potentially several more times this year. The Biden administration seems very committed to a tax and spend policy and a welfare expansion any way that they can kind of get it. Do you think that a recession is coming? Sadly, I think a slowdown is coming. Whether it's an official recession, the way they keep numbers these days, people are going to feel less prosperity. And unfortunately, the Federal Reserve doesn't know how to fight inflation. They think a vibrant economy creates rising prices. No, it's bad monetary policy. Devaluing the dollar is what causes a big cause of rising prices. Mm -hmm. So in terms of what the Fed is doing, they shouldn't even be, Tom, they shouldn't even be controlling interest rates. That's like rent control. We know that hurts the economy because it hurts new construction. What they say, they can't pick the price of people borrowing money. So what they're doing is they're artificially making money more expensive. You know, mortgage rates, 30 years have gone from 2.5% to over 5%. Right. Most people have readjustable mortgages, floating mortgage rates. What's going to happen later this year when they suddenly find those monthly payments go up? It's going to be another hit to the American consumer, especially That's the right. American homeowner. Absolutely. So again... Another Biden disaster, yeah. Federal right, Reserve I, disaster in this case. Now, now, Steve, I know that, you know, you love talking about big, bold solutions. You talk about solutions in the book. I think that's really important for people. What's the way forward here? Um, and, uh, and while Washington is in gridlock, are you seeing some positive moves out there that maybe from the states that may help? Oh, well, this is the wonderful thing about federalism in this country. We have states each doing their own thing. And the free difference between red states and blue states, there was a study, as you know, that came out that states that had huge lockdowns did no better in terms of health than states that had uh, more uh, sensible policies mm -hmm. like the free state of Florida and economically and emotional, the emotional damage done in those free states, mm -hmm. far, far less than what we had in other states. So in places like Florida, they have no income tax. I was putting in a low flat tax. Uh, Mississippi and others are talking about phasing out their income taxes. So you see a lot of good things happening on the state level. And I think that's going to set the stage not just for 2022, but a national agenda like a flat tax, like stable money in 2024, and really get this country back on track. 
because the world can't wait. We got to start after the November elections because you see what's happening in Ukraine, what you said before uh, we came on. Absolutely true. We could win in Ukraine if this administration would give that country the weapons it needs. It could throw Putin out of Ukraine. But they are so upset, Vladimir might get upset even more. Come on, let's get real. We're fighting evil. And only America can lead the charge against evil. You know, Steve, it's always so, it always comes back to giving people back their own money, allowing them to keep their own money instead of giving it to the government. You do that, you solve a lot of these problems and you even solve a lot of societal problems as well. Everybody, check, Absolutely. Out, check out the new book, Inflation, What It Is, Why It's Bad, and How to Fix It. Steve Forbes, thank you so much for your time, sir. Happy Easter. And thank you. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.